This video gives you an idea of some stuff I do to create my videos. So if you can stick around, then that's great. To kick things off, what are these dots all about? Well, I wasn't quite happy with my footage from the floor indicator display panel. The LEDs, in my opinion, do not stand out as well as I wanted them to. It bothers me. Something must be done. The solution is to use two layers both of the same footage. The top layer will be darkened, while the LEDs from the bottom brighter layer poke through the holes to the top layer. Watch for a bit. This is the mask. It's easy to manipulate the dots. The principle here is the same for creating blurred out masking effects. However, these dots reveal too much of the bottom layer. I'm not happy with it. The dots are too large. I have to correct it. The display panel footage is rock solid. This was done by using the no motion stabilizing effect. And it's cropped and repositioned of course. Moving on to something else now. This panning sequence Standing dead center, panning the camera down. Looks okay, but my attention to detail kicked in here. This is what it looked like before. It's not straight, and it's noticeable. To me, anyway. As the camera pans down, I've rotated the footage to make it level all the way down. This is perfection. This section took a while to complete. A long while. Synchronized indicators. As this is the part two section, it's way down the timeline. There is so much footage to go through here. Ignore video six, seven lines in pink. I put them here as a marker so I could see when things happen. The nested sequences are layers that have been merged. These make up the multi-camera layers. Watch. I bring your attention to nested sequence 04. Now this is a beast. Let's see the layers nested in here. Ew. 
each indicator is a separate layer. Each must be switched on and off as the video progresses. But it's the sheer number of layers and the off-on sequences that take the time. It's not difficult to synchronise, just use the audio track. Nested layers are really useful, I use them all the time. Remember nested sequence 04? Here it has been added, I've cut it up, duplicated and cropped various parts from it. Then I've made each one pan and zoom smoothly into the corner. So that's a few things that I did to create this video. But let's not forget audio. How did I synchronise the dramatic part at the start of the video when I walked towards the lift? Then I timed the last ding with me pressing the button. Did the audio fit all this exactly? Not quite. One of the most important parts is the music selection. I do it by placing some audio, then playing the video. It either works with the video or it doesn't. When you've decided on your music, then you need to make it match with the video. It's sometimes easier to split the audio, then fade one part into another. But it doesn't sound right unless the beats align perfectly. That volume increase maxed out the VU meter. Adjustments required. And finally, fading into the last audio. This bit has already been matched exactly with me pressing the call button. So now I work backwards to make it match with the previous audio selection. Video editing is an art. It takes a lot of practice, but the more you edit, the more you learn. When you play back your project, you see areas that you can improve on next time. Yes, this is Adobe Premiere. It doesn't really compare to home user products, but it's all about what you are trying to achieve. For me, I try to create content that you'll find interesting and enjoy watching. Years ago, I was creating videos like this with Pinnacle Studio. It took a lot longer, it crashed quite a bit, but it still worked. But when these videos became so complex, I was spending more time on crashes than I was editing. It was time to move on. It's all about creating your own style in whatever product you decide to use.